Now the second uh, area, which we'll be using the same diagram, is this idea of in looking at the corpus callosum. And the corpus callosum um, is really the interface between the two hemispheres. And it, as you can see, it's this bundle of, of neural fibers that uh, facilitate the communication between the two hemispheres itself. And the uh, area that we're talking about here, which you can see is just this massive area right in the middle that where all the fibers come through, and then it shows it again on this particular diagram. And the corpus callosum is part of what we begin to understand uh, when we talk about the uh, whole idea of the divided brain. Um, the right hemisphere is particularly adept at various functions, and the left hemisphere is particularly adept at other functions. And so, uh, when we oftentimes you'll see uh, uh, you'll you'll see interactions uh, with people who have had uh, the corpus callosum severed because of um, epileptic seizures, and there is actually a video online that you can actually look at and uh, see uh, what uh, happens with somebody who has this divided brain when this area right down the middle is cut so that uh, the epileptic seizure doesn't cascade from uh, one hemisphere over here and cascades into the other hemisphere over here. And, and it, a lot of the research that we've done um, and found out the various functions of the hemispheres uh, is has been found out because of these uh, severed corpus callosums and or corpus callosum and you can you can see uh, the dividing even in um, our eyesight the diagram in your book shows uh, the vision and what part of the visual field is processed by what part of the brain in the the um, right hemisphere and the left hemisphere uh, and the the uh, gentleman that is pictured in your book, uh, that's what this video is, who actually had the corpus callosum severed and how he sees and processes the word heart. And, in, and each one is processed in different parts of the visual field. So he reports seeing he, because it's in the left hemisphere and language comes out of there, And, but when he uh, draws or talks about art, uh, he will point, asking him with a different hand, uh, the left hand, he will point at art. Uh, be, and so the right hemisphere uh, is processing the information, but it depends on the um, left hemisphere to communicate for it. And so when we sever those two, we see action from the right that actually indicates what he saw, but language, what we depend on, is what he communicates essentially. When we talk about uh, the, the left hemisphere where language and a lot of these other uh, um, aspects are contained, uh, the right hemisphere is great uh, for uh, making inferences. Right hemisphere, whoops. Uh, it's also uh, great for modulating speech to make meaning clear, so modulating speech. And the other one, which is interesting because it's so mute, and mute by the sense of language, but it, it uh, orchestrates our sense of self. And you know, you would think that uh, the language would do that when in fact the right hemisphere is greatly responsible 
for in orchestrating uh, who we are or how we see ourselves and how we operate in the world around us and seeing ourselves. So it orchestrates a sense of self. And those are just a few that I wanted to highlight for you um, when it comes to that. 